Mary for Dokum Shushi Gendra, a nonprofit organization fully committed to preserving the rich culture, language, and religious heritage of Tibet and raising awareness on human rights abuses there under communist China. Please welcome Mr. Ngawen Tharchin and the board members of Dokum Shushi Gendra. Hello everyone, we are from Tibet. Uh, we are current board members of uh, regional Dokum Chushi group based in New York and New Jersey. It is a uh, great honor to be part of the commemoration of Vietnam Human Rights Day. We would like to thank Dr. Twain and organizing committee for the kind invitation. Dokum Chushi Gandu was the first resistance movement formed inside Tibet on June 16, 1958 under the direct, direct name of Andrew Bongutashi, although it was not successful in securing the Tibetan independence and resist, and resist the spread of communist China. Due to their mighty military power, it did, however, achieve its main objective, which was to ensure the personal safety of His Holiness the Dalai Lama by successfully providing a safe passage to India in 1959. Dogam Chichi advocates for the complete and rightful independence of Tibet, and it was initially formed to expel communist China out of Tibet and regain Tibetan independence, but after the failure of its aim, it finally, finally established itself as a welfare organization in various countries around the world as we are in the United States. We are not for profit organization with Section 501C3 status in the state of New York. We are fully committed to preserving our rich language, culture, religious heritage. Our constant work is to raise awareness about the deplorable human rights situation inside Tibet under communist China. Tibet shares very close relationship with Vietnam when it comes to religion and culture. Also similarities in politics. A Vietnam, a single party state, and Tibet being ruled by a communist China, which is also a one party authoritarian state, Kung Ten Tang, or the Communist Party of China. In this 21st century, it is indeed very sad and unfortunate to see a single party or few people control and decide the fate of millions of people. The human rights situation in Tibet continues to deteriorate. The 34th session of the session of United Nations Human Rights Council that opened on February 27th of this year, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Prince Said Wright Al Hussein, expressed serious concern over the cultural and religious restriction inside Tibet. Also on January 27, 2016, American Human Rights and Democracy Organization, the Freedom House published its annual world report and mentioned that only Syria received a lower score on freedom and human rights survey in the world, which means human rights and freedom in Tibet is worse than that, of, that in the North Korea and Somalia. So far, 149 Tibetan have self demolished in, in Tibet since February 2009, including the most recent one in April 15, 2017 by Wongchuk Tsetenwa from Karze in eastern Tibet. Since July 2016, the Chinese government has started the demolition of Larunga, one of the largest Buddhist learning institutes located in Serpa in eastern Tibet, that accommodates over 10,000 Tibetan Buddhists and nuns. Benchen Lama holds the second highest post in Tibetan Buddhism after His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Soon after the six-year-old Gendin Chugi Nima was recognized as the reincarnation of previous Benchen Lama, he went missing and his whereabouts are still unknown. On April 25th of 2017, he turned 20 years, 28 years old. Due to high influx of Han Chinese in Tibet, Tibet have become, Tibetans have become a minority in their own country. Tibetan language, identity, and the culture are on the verge of extinction. A building environmentally destructive dams on the rivers of Tibet 
that is the life source of billion people in South and East Asia is alarming and real concern. When we talk about the rivers of Tibet, the Mekong River, which uh, also known as uh, Song Mekong in uh, Vietnam, which originates from Tibet, and then, then flows through China, to Burma, to Thailand, to Laos, Cambodia, and then to Vietnam. Uh, China has uh, at least built six massive dams on these rivers, which seriously affects the uh, uh, billions of people living downstream of this river. The human rights situation in Tibet remains critical, and it is imperative that all the government leaders, politicians, and ordinary citizens of the world join hands and speak up to defend human rights in Tibet, Vietnam, and, and in all similar situations around the world. Last but not least, we want to say that all human beings deserve equal rights to live. The world does not belong to a single party, a corporation, a single family, or one person. The world belongs to all the compassionate, freedom-loving people of the world. Thank you.